Well, gonna give it like I normally do, two minutes just to see if anyone else is gonna drop in and then we will make a start. Good morning guys in the chat, good to see you. Thank you for coming again, thank you for giving up your time. What I will say is that my internet connection has been a little bit iffy over the last few days. So hopefully I won't get cut out, but if I do, I will try and make my way back. Just give it until two minutes past, so we'll give it one more minute and then we will crack on. But I'll just reiterate like I always do, from the confines of my home, so we are subject to noises on the door, noises from my dog, internet falling out, which I've already said a little bit worried about today because of past performance. If any of these things go wrong, I will make my way back to you as quick as I can and continue the session. I've got quite bad hay fever, so I might be coming across a little bit nasally. So apologies for that if that annoys you as well. <laughs> and we will get started soon with storytelling, the final session in the four free webinars that we've put together for you guys. Hopefully so far they have been useful and hopefully today will be no different unless they haven't been useful, in which case I hope today is. So let's make a start guys, it's two minutes past. So let's crack on and let me introduce the session a little bit further. So as per normal guys, thank you so much for signing up, opening the emails, taking your time, whatever you've done to get here, thank you very much for being part of it. If you want to join the small Twitter conversation that we've had so far, the hashtag is content drop in. Anything that you want to kind of continue the conversation on Twitter would be great. If you want to continue on LinkedIn, also great. We've had a great LinkedIn chat courtesy of Anne last week, which was brilliant. Uh, that's what this is all about. It's about inspiring conversation. Um, so if you're willing to do that and you want to continue that conversation, let's do it. Um, so today we're going to be talking about championing your customers, championing your customers, building relationships and outlasting your competition through storytelling, because ultimately that's what storytelling is all about. We're going to talk hero's journey. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but we're going to look at understanding in terms of marketing and how we can make it work for us. We're going to look at how emotionally we react to stories. Uh, and we're basically going to invite the people that come to look at our content to stay for the business because that's what storytelling does for businesses. It's what it does for marketers. They come and they watch or they read or they interact with your content and then they stay for the business without maybe even necessarily knowing that they were looking for that in the first place or they might have just been looking for advice or information or tips. Uh, that's what storytelling does so well and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but I just wanted to address first, guys, what you guys asked me for, because I want to make sure these, se these sessions are tailored. Um, so I've picked out some, some key words, basically, in uh, your signups as to how or what you wanted from this session. So engagement, how can we get more engagement? How can I be more focused on story, less focused on waffling? How can I have copy that supports growth? I need some website and social tips. I want brilliant blogs, okay? These are all things that people have asked me for, and these are things that I'm gonna be specifically revisiting at the end of the session to make sure that you've got your values worth there. Before we get to that, however, I wanna look at what I think is one of the best brand examples of storytelling. Apologies if you can hear my dog drinking really loudly in the background there. <laughs> He's done now, right. But firstly, why should we even care about storytelling? Well, here's a statistic. I'm not going to read it to you. Have a look at that. Fifty-five percent of customers are more likely to buy your product in the future. Half of the people that see the content or the story are going to come back. Almost half of them will share it. That level of brand exposure is too much to ignore. Okay, it's too much to resist. Another statistic here, have a look at this one. Okay, it's gonna make consumers happy to look at your content. I mean, imagine when you're, on when you're watching TV, I don't watch much normal TV now, I'm a bit of a Netflix person, but when you're watching TV and you get all of those adverts flick through, how much better would it be if all of them were stories? If all of them were story-based? 
I know the adverts that I remember most are story based. So if you can get people to want you to advertise to them because you tell a good story, you have won. You are winning. And that's why this is so important. So on from the stats and on to something called pareidolia. Now, you've probably almost already guessed what this is just through the picture I've put up. Can any of you see a little face in the back of this alarm clock? The sad little face on this alarm clock. So if you have already seen that, you're already enacting pareidolia. We love to personify ourselves and see ourselves in everything around us. It doesn't matter what those things are. If you're going through Ikea and you see a set of forks and knives, you might see faces in them. You might see family members in them. We love to personify ourselves and we like to do this not only with products, but with brands because brands are just an idea. But if we can make them real and like a person, then they start to mean a lot more to the people that interact with them and to the people that don't. So if we can make our brands personified, if we can make our stories real, people are going to engage with them more. They activate sensory experience. This is something storytellers do so, so well. And in marketing, when you do this, the outcomes can be incredible. And I'm going to show you again, I've said this already, an example where I think um, a brand does this so, so well, activates our sensory experience, so our taste, touch, smell, sight, etc. And we want that to happen with brands. Like I've said, why you exist and why you are a thing has to be personal. Okay, and that's harder than it sounds. It's much harder than it sounds. It's very easy to say that you offer a product or a service. It's much harder to say why people should care and what makes you personal to your customers. To do this, you must have an incentive beyond profit. We've covered this a little bit in our why sessions and, and maybe even before that. But you have to exist beyond profit because customers sniff that out in a, in a second or, you know, in a moment. You have to exist for something beyond just profit. You've got to have a meaning to resonate with audiences today. Doesn't matter if you're B2C or B2B, business to business or business to consumer. So let's start by just having a quick look at the hero's journey. I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs. I'm not going to force feed uh, academia down your throat here. But this is something that resonates within all stories and is super useful for us to remember. Because like Philip Pullman says, stories are the things we need most in the world to be human after obviously things that make us survive. So I want to talk to you about the hero's journey, but I want to put your client client or customer at the center of that journey okay they are your hero so you exist to serve a hero or a series of heroes you've got to think about it that way if your brand sees itself as the hero if you think you're the hero you're not going to resonate with an audience because ultimately you belong to serve others that's why you're there okay you belong to serve others and they should be your hero every good story in existence has this same arc Okay, there are a lot of points on this story, and I'm not saying that you should consider every single point in every aspect of your marketing. That would be madness. But you must consider the normal world versus the unknown world. So when your clients or customers come to you, they're right at the top, our little man with the backpack there. Uh, but as soon as they take on one of your services or buy one of your products, they could be entering into this unknown. Okay, And that unknown is the relationship between you and them. You need to make sure that your content helps them on their journey through that unknown. Whoops, I've gone way too far. <laughs> helps them through that journey of the unknown to come out a better or improved person. OK, if you can help them become better or strive for something more or show them how to be better, then you have achieved something. And it doesn't matter what your service is here. It, it sounds so kind of grandiose to say that you can make somebody be better. But whether you're se selling somebody a screwdriver or you're selling them counseling services, you are improving them. OK, you are giving them the means to find improvement. They can either screw the correct screw into the wall with the right head or they can go on to find coping mechanisms that they didn't know how to access before. So regardless, whatever you're selling is going to get them to a place of improvement if you do it right. So here is the way I think that storytelling makes its way through a brand. I did the most research for this one out of all of them because storytelling is massively important to me. I did a creative writing degree and stories do have that ability to move us. 
And when I moved into marketing, it seemed to me that everyone was just hitting this key. It's like a buzzword, isn't it? Oh, you've got to tell stories. You've got to be a storyteller. But what does that actually mean? Because the only stories you really see in marketing, and this is where my opinion and my research comes into it, is at the top level, is at a campaign level. The story interacts with your why, your why you exist. If you were here for that session, you're going to know a little bit more on it. If you've watched the Simon Sinek video, you're going to know a little bit more about that. Your brand has to have a reason why it exists. If it doesn't have that, making a story is going to be impossible in my opinion, a story that's consistent will be impossible. You need to have your why. So go and revisit that session if you need to, or watch the Simon Sinek video. Establish that so you can build a story. And it then filters down. Your campaigns are your visions. How are you going to enact your why? How are you going to change people's lives? How are you going to give them that right screwdriver? OK, if you're a tool selling company and I'm always going to bring it back to a manual labor company, because I always find that people think that they're the hardest to humanize and tell stories about. And it's just not the case. And once you've got that vision and that campaign, it filters down into your brand, which is all of your marketing collateral, your website, your magazine shoot, whatever it might be. Anything that's out there with your name on it, it should be filtering down. And then ultimately it will filter all the way down to your sales and your products and services. And that doesn't mean if you're selling the screwdriver, you've got a story about the screwdriver on the back of the box. No, 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 no. By the time they've bought that product, they've already engaged with the reason why you exist. Or perhaps they were just in the market for a screwdriver in that moment. But if you want to outlast your competition, you've got to make your product or service matter. You've got to humanize it. And those brands will outlast the rest. So stop me again if I'm going uh, too fast or if you've got any questions. We're going to jump into my example today and I'm using Dove as my example because I think Dove do storytelling incredibly. Uh, there are loads of brilliant brands and I've talked about loads of my favorites, but I'm going to look at Dove today. We're going to start at the start. Now, Ogilvy is mastermind of marketing uh, and someone I should hugely respect. I've read his works and I do hugely respect him. But I think in some cases, things have moved on. So brands have changed. This is how Dove used to advertise themselves. It was all about things. It was all about making your skin silky smooth, women in baths, uh, and kind of that voyeurism alongside particularly aiming at females, attractive females with silky smooth skin, etc., etc. So it made its money by showing glamorous women creaming themselves in baths. OK, it set itself aside from soap originally uh, because this one would not malnourish your skin. It would moisturize it. And when this released, this advert, it did brilliantly for Dove. OK, it did absolutely brilliantly. It set them apart in the market and it made them the number one selling soap brand for years to come. And they used that same messaging across all of their marketing for, for many years. Uh, so once upon a time, you could have actually blamed Dove for the way women saw themselves, the way they saw beauty, et cetera, et cetera, because they were part of the problem, okay? Once upon a time, they were, and their advertising certainly was. But brands can change. That's the most important things here, especially if you're going to be genuine. You can enforce genuine uh, change by being honest and building relationships to outlast your competition. Okay. At the beginning, they just outlasted their competition by offering something different. But people change, consumers change, they want something different. So can brands. Okay, And that's the story we're going to look at today. Now, I want to show you um, a video first so I can show you my theory about how this filters from the campaign level down. You might have seen this Dove campaign, uh, Real Beauty Sketches. Uh, it's, a, it's a great advert. I'm just going to pop that on now for you guys. Uh, so let me know if you can hear it correctly. I should have it up here. Are you guys seeing the YouTube at the moment or not? Yes. Awesome. Right. Let's play this then, guys. I'm a forensic artist. Worked for the San Jose Police Department from 1995 to 2011. I showed up to a place I'd never been, and there was a guy with a drafting board. We couldn't see them, they couldn't see us. Tell me about your hair. I didn't know what he was doing, but then I could tell after several questions that he was drawing me. 
Tell me about your chin. It kind of protrudes a little bit, hmm. especially when I smile. Your jaw? My mom told me I had a big jaw. What would be your most prominent feature? I kind of have a fat, rounder face. The older I've gotten, the more freckles I've gotten. I would say I have a pretty big forehead. Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and then they leave. I don't see them. All I had been told before the sketch was to get friendly with this other woman, Chloe. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about uh, a person you met earlier, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their face. She was thin, so you could see her cheekbones. And her chin, it was a nice, thin chin. She had nice eyes. They lit up when she spoke. Cute nose. She had blue eyes, very nice blue eyes. So here we are. This is the sketch that you helped me create. And that's a sketch that somebody described of you. So yeah, that's... She looks closed off and fatter, sadder too. Mm -hmm. The second one looks more open, friendly, and happy. Mm -hmm. I should be more grateful of my natural beauty. It impacts the choices in the friends that we make, the jobs we apply for, how we treat our children. It impacts everything. It couldn't be more critical to your happiness. Do you think you're more beautiful than you say? Yeah. Yeah. We spend a lot of time as women analyzing and trying to fix the things that aren't quite right. And we should spend more time appreciating the things that we do like. Okay, so... Powerful advert, I think. Powerful bit of marketing that. Really good at a campaign level at showing what doves stand for. Now, you can instantly discredit that advert by saying, well, these women all have what we would consider to be stereotypical beauty. And I couldn't argue with you there. I agree. Uh, but the point of it, <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Because when I looked at the YouTube comments, I saw people discrediting this for what I just said, stereotypical beauty in these women, they do have those features, some of them already. Um, but that's not the point. The point of this advert is not the accuracy of the drawings. It's not what the women actually look like. It's about how they perceive themselves. And it's about how other people perceive them. That's the message here. And that's why this campaign was so strong. It worked so well and it resonated in so many women because they all connected. There was that human connection between them and the heroes that they saw on that screen. And that's why it was so powerful. Sorry, I hope that you guys have seen my uh, presentation back here, but that's the point of this. So how does that filter down then into Dove's other product services, marketing collateral, etc. like I said before. Well, here you go. You click onto Dove's website and you instantly get storytelling filtering down into their pages. The image represents an ethnic minority. It represents natural beauty, everything Dove is standing for. And then you have that message, welcome to Dove, the home of real beauty. For over a decade, we've been working to make beauty a source of confidence, not anxiety. And here's where the journey continues. Now, two things stand out for me here. One, Dove, excuse me, acknowledge that they haven't been doing this for time eternal for over a decade. Dove have existed much longer than that, okay? But they've only been standing for this for a decade. That's human and it's honest, okay? And instantly that's building a connection because I've just shown you what Dove's adverts were like before. So they're honest and they're human here. And then those key words, if you like, from their story filter down. Beauty, confidence, anxiety. 
And so this is just elongating that story. It's taking features of the story and it's popping it on the home page. So if you were to watch that campaign and then land here, it makes total sense. Okay, that storytelling is fluent and it goes on. If you go and click into their skincare range, you've got the ladies there at the top, all representing what the brand is about. Confidence in beautiful skin. Okay, and these are activating the senses as well. I mean, Dove are quite lucky because they do skincare and healthcare and things like that. Well, not healthcare, but you know what I mean. So it already activates our senses. We know sight, we know touch, etc. We know what soft skin feels like. We know what rough skin feels like. So they've got something instantly going for them here. But these little snippets of storytelling feed through to their website. Okay which is why our skincare range develops indulgent care to transform your routine. Now, that sentence gets the imagery going in the person's mind who's looking at this. They probably know what their morning routine is. They know what doves stand for. They want more of that in their lives. They want more confidence. They want more surety in their own beauty. And that's what Dove stands for. The story has told them that at the top and it's rolling right through the rest of their content. But it doesn't stop there. Blogs. I had somebody ask specific about specifically about blogs. How do I make my how do I write blogs without so much pain and suffering? Um, well, take a leaf out of Dove's book. Dove could very easily have just written a beauty tips blog, a stylist blog where you could go and you could find out how to use their products better. And it would probably shove you in the direction of a few of their products. And there would have been nothing wrong with that, by the way. I write plenty of blogs like that. If a blog is set up to be that way fine. So long as it's useful, fine. But Dove don't do that. Their story continues straight through their content and onto their blog. blog. The self-esteem project. Okay, different audience here, but same readers. So the audience are actually the children at the end of it, but the readers and the users are going to be the mums, the teachers, the carers, whatever. Okay, these are going to be the people landing here. And this takes that body confidence, it takes that self-esteem, and it rolls it straight through into the blog. And they have articles and whole sections on how to build better self-esteem, reinforcing what their mission is about. Okay, and this blog has changed. It was something else before the self-esteem project, and they change it to kind of reflect different parts of their brand. It's such a clever blog. Uh, blog. <laughs> it doesn't just sell products. In fact, there's no mention of products in here. That's not what this is about. This is about the brand wanting to help its heroes become better people or to feel like they are better people. And it starts from the campaign and it comes right the way through. But it doesn't stop there because they're even like that on social media. Okay, if, I don't know if any of you guys have interacted with them on social media. I haven't, but I've seen their campaigns. Brilliant again. Tweet a compliment to a friend today. Hashtag speak beautiful. Let's make social media a more positive place. Brilliant. I mean, and that's exactly again from the story right at the top and it's filtering all the way down. And what you'll realize, and I'm going to pick up again on later, is the same words, the same phrasing, the same story elements are in everything Dove does. Now, I'm not saying that they've done this 100% right all of the time. They have been called out for being racist, etc., etc. But as we know before, Dove stand up and are, hold themselves accountable for that. And I'm going to show you an example of when that went wrong for them. Well, I'm not going to show you the example of when it went wrong, but I'll show you how they reacted to it. So stand for something, I think, is a learning we can take so far. And what did this even mean to him? What did it mean to Dove? Well, the campaign's impact was massive. I mean, you guys here, here are just saying your mascara's running and, and the emotional impact was huge instantly. You'll remember that advert now for a long time to come. And it's likely, I'll put a bit on it, that you share it at some point because it had an emotional impact on you, okay? And me, which is why I chose it. It's fantastic. That video was shared 3.7 more million times in the first month. In the first month, it was the third most shared video of all time. Sales due to it jumped from 2.5 to $4 billion in the first 10 years. Speaks for itself, that one.
And Dove Bars became the number one preferred soap brand in the US and it's number one selling product company wide. So that campaign had massive impact. It didn't even mention Dove Soap or Dove product A, product B. It didn't need to because the rest of its content is doing that for it. What that campaign does is it tells the story, the rest of its content does the, does the rest of the work right down into the products, like I said at the beginning. The products sell themselves because people see Dove as something aspirational. And even if we go back to our tool buyer, our man who needs the screwdriver, why can't his brand that he buys the screwdriver from be seen as aspirational? Easy, it can be done. Not easy, but it can be done. It's all about that initial story. I've used it for years. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So, and what I wanted to say earlier, they have been called out before, but they react to it and they do that brilliantly on social media. So I don't know if any of you guys saw the project hashtag show us, but it asked women to just come out and take photos of themselves to realign what beauty stereotypes were. And it partnership with Getty Images and Gilgaz and things like that to make sure that these things kind of made a difference and were seen as them challenging what they stood for before and showing that they had changed, showing that they had listened and they're human and they can get it wrong. So really good reactive marketing from them as well, which takes those, um, takes elements from their story and passes it all the way down. And Jonathan says they reacted to animal testing in 2018, great response to consumer pressure. They're a brilliant brand for doing this. And I'll say it again, you know, Jonathan's right, brands get it wrong. But it's the brands that stand up and use that initial story, that initial why they exist to counteract it and to learn and grow. They're the ones that people will stick with. But we've only got a couple more minutes here and I'm not here to advertise Dove. <laughs> it might seem that way, but I'm not. I wanted to use them because they're just a fantastic brand for this. And I want to come back to what you guys wanted from this session in the last three minutes. So you guys are after getting more engagement. Well, here are my tips for that on the, on the back of this. Appeal to something real. Like I said, when we watched that Dove campaign, it wasn't about beauty. It wasn't about the accuracy of, sorry, it was about beauty, but it wasn't about the accuracy of those pictures or the stereotypical beauty that you saw in those women initially. It was how they felt about themselves that resonated. So appeal to something real, just like that campaign appealed to emotions. And then on from that, appeal to emotion or a need. If you see it there in your, in your customers, in your clientele, and in, in your target audience, represent, okay, represent your heroes. If you're helping brands get themselves in front of people, if you're helping, oh, I don't know, Barry buy a screwdriver, if you're, whatever it is you're doing, represent them, okay? Be one with them, understand what they're going through and offer them something to better themselves and to make their lives easier. Stand against something or stand for something. It's that old saying, isn't it? Stand for something or fall for nothing. Okay, you've got to be there. You've got to have people that won't like you. It's fine. If everybody likes you, you're doing it wrong. It's what they used to tell me as a teacher anyway. So uh, I stand by that one. And let that same story from your why or from your campaign trickle down into all of your messaging. And you will see consistency brings you greater engagement. You also wanted more story, less waffle. So here are some tips for that. Are you confident that your story, your why, relays a clear message? If you have any doubt that your why is relaying something you know, clear, revisit it. Because you'll see when you try and filter it down, the less clear that message is, the worse it's going to uh, work and you will waffle more. Have you established a bank of go-to vocabulary for your copy? So see how many times beauty, confidence, uh, body... Uh, body confidence and things like that came up in Dove's copy over and over again, okay? It's because they're a bank of go-to words that shows their brand consistency, echoes their story. Are you taking everything out that is an elephant? Okay, this is based on a story of a sculptor who is sculpting an elephant. And somebody said, how did you sculpt that sculpture of an elephant? And he said, well, I just removed everything that was an elephant. Okay, so are you removing everything from your copy that is waffling? 
Okay, are you, are you taking out everything that isn't exactly the point you're trying to relay? And then think, is it really customer focused or are you just indulging yourself? Now we move on to copy that supports growth that others of you are looking at. So think about copy and how that builds relationships. Okay, so is your copy building a relationship with your client or target customer? Does it go beyond purely selling a service or a product? Is your web copy an extension of your why and your vision? It's exactly what I've been talking about pretty much the whole way through these series. Does it filter down from the top? Okay. Is it clear and does it show people what you stand for? Okay, stand for something or stand against something, but you must be clear on, on that line because it makes you more human and it makes you more engaging and personable. And then something I hate is when pages or any kind of advertising doesn't tell you what to do next. Okay, does it have an obvious next step? Website and social tips. Look at Dove's website. It's an engine of change. That's the way I see it. And I think the best websites are engines of change. They want something to happen. They stand for something. They represent a hero. And their website is there to make sure that that hero gets the positive change that they're looking for, whether that be a product or a service. Messaging and fragments of that story that filters down. And then how you can tailor your special offering to speak to your audience. And then think about your social voice. Is that the same voice as your storyteller? Because if there's inconsistency there, then you're going to have problems with um, making your client or customer believe you. Okay, you're going to become unbelievable. There needs to be consistency between your social media and your, and your storytelling voice. And then lastly, with blogs. Think about offering more than just advice sprinkled with products. I think I was having a conversation with uh, Tasha. I'm not, not sure if she's here, where she was saying she was struggling at differentiating kind of the point of a blog um, being not to sell. Well, it's not. It's, it's to offer advice, it's to offer information, it's to offer something more. So what more can your blog offer than just a product? What information will help your hero grow or become better? How can you help them do that also? And then brand messages that's going to feed down into your blogs. Okay, We don't want repetition here, but we want consistency. Do they serve something, a purpose beyond selling? Just to conclude, guys, I know I'm going a little bit over here. OK, two more minutes tops. I went through a load of brands before I chose Dove. OK, if you want to have a look at some of the others that do this really, really well, have a look down this list here. Not not all of them do it as well as Dove, which is why I chose them. But another list of great storytellers here. And that brings us to the end. I'm sorry if you've heard some background noise in the last few minutes of this, um, but I had some movement around the house. But that brings us to the end, guys. Um, the four sessions are done. There's no more. Uh, I hope this one was useful. I hope you found them all useful. Um, if you've been here, happy to take any questions before I go. Uh, happy to continue the conversation if that's what you'd like to do. Like I say at the end of every session, add me on Twitter, add me on LinkedIn, endorse me, send me hate feedback if, if you want me to improve. I'm happy to take on anything. Uh, it's just been really good to kind of get a conversation going with you guys and hopefully give you some actionable tips to improve your brand slash messaging. Okay, a massive thank you from Pina. I love that. You are more than welcome. Sessions have been very useful and interesting. Great. I'm glad to hear that. Can we get access to the recordings of past events? Emma, yes, of course you can. I will send an email later today, which will have access to this one. And I will include links to all the other sessions in that email as well. Glad the sessions have been so good, Melanie. Thanks for coming. Debbie, every session has been so useful. I'm so glad to hear that. Really glad. Um, so helpful. Good, good, good. You are welcome, Kathy and Anne. Um, brilliant advice and simple to use. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Looking forward to seeing the others. Am I planning to run this again, Sam? Um, I don't know. I could do. I'm more than happy to do some extra ones. If you want me to, send me some messages with what you'd like to be in them. Um, and I'll have a think. But anyway, guys, I've got a shivy on because there's another Zoom meeting that has to take control of the house. So if you've got any more questions, fire them over to me either via email or social media. 
I hope you found this useful, guys, and it's been great to be here. Have a good rest of your week. Bye. Hi, guys. Sorry about that.